even distribution of color throughout the bristles. See right there how it's evenly spread through. All right, so we're just gonna come oh, about like right here. Just throw a little bit of yellow. Now this piece of wood behind the canvas might kind of ruin this one, but oh well. If it does, it does. Not the end of the world. Blend it out. I'm going to throw some of this down here. So we're going to have water down here. Alright. So now without even cleaning the brush, we're going to go right into bright red. You just need a little bit of this stuff. A little bit of this goes a long way. You don't need much of this at all. But again, you just beat the brush to have it evenly distribute. Alright, so now we'll go right underneath the yellow. Why is the easel moving? This is really thick paint so when you put this stuff on you're applying a good deal amount of pressure so it's gonna move the easel around a bit what I do need to do is actually put like some weights down on the bottom of, of it or something but if it starts moving really bad I can just put my like foot on it and it kind of sort of holds it in place a little better So there's our bright red. We'll put some bright red down here as well. Just pull this in from the side. Start on the side and pull toward the middle. gently go across the whole thing. Alright, now up here I'm going to put a darker color that's going to kind of simulate clouds. So I'm going to mix up a purple color. So for purple you're normally going to use alizarin crimson and phthalo blue. And you're going to use it in about a 3 to 1 ratio meaning three parts crimson to one part blue. The blue is way stronger than the red. It's way stronger. So you want to mix up a good little chunk of it. You don't need a, like a, a whole bunch of paint, but you want to have a good amount. And so if you want to check what color of purple this is, seeing how it's so dark you can't really tell, what you can do is grab some titanium white and then just put a little bit of titanium white into it and that'll brighten it up so you can see what your actual tone of it is. Oh, what's up, Mike? What's up, Nopat? Ross and you. 
Right, so yeah, if you want to see what color this is, just grab a little bit of it and put it off to the side and grab some white and just rub it in. And then you can see what kind of a purple you just made. That's a good purple, so that's what we're going to use. So we're going to put some purple up here. Still using the same dirty brush. We haven't cleaned it yet. You're just going to go into a little bit of this. This is another color where like a little bit of it goes a long way. So starting up in the top corner, just going to work your way across. Let's get a little bit more color. going to be like a nice evening, or not, yeah, I guess it would be like a sunset evening sky. Put some of this down here. When you're doing water, start on the side and pull toward the middle and try to keep your strokes horizontal. Even if you have like a little bit of a wobble to them, it'll look weird. You won't really like how it looks. Okay, so now we can go back in here and put in some indications of clouds just using the same dark color. We can just kind of then some real basic cloud shapes. You want these to be really light. You don't want to have these really, really dark. You're just kind of putting little indications back here. You want them to be almost like nondescript, you know? So I don't even know if you can really see those on stream or not. Actually, you know what? Maybe if I, maybe if I tilt this down a little bit, you guys will be able to see it better. It looks like there's a pretty big glare coming off these lights. helps any. Alright, so. And if you want, like, if you don't want to do, like, the clouds with the big brush, you can take, you know, one of these smaller one-inch brushes. You can use a fan brush. It doesn't really matter. I mean, all you're doing is just putting in very, 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 very loose little shapes. I'll show you how you do a fan brush. I mean, it's the same thing. You're just going to do little circles. Same thing over here. Just let your brush kind of bounce around and do what it wants to do. Alright, so then once you have those, Go back in with your big brush and you're going to blend them out. So use just the top corner of the brush for this part. You're just winding up the bottom parts of it. You want to try to stay away from the top edge. Let's blend out the bottoms. All right, then when you have them blended out, you're going to do like a little arc type of a motion. And that's basically just going to like fluff the clouds up. 
The reason why you leave that top edge alone is so when you do this part, it pulls like little wispy things up into the sky. And then once you have your little wispy things, you go back and forth over the whole thing, very, very light. And it'll blend the little wispy things in and it gives it a sense of motion. Okay, good, you can see that better now. And then if you want, you can put in like some little wispy clouds like back here. We'll take some of that purple color and grab just a bit of like this bright red. Mix that in. Just so you have a little bit of a different color. And then just wherever you want, just kind of scrub these little floaty guys in here. There's no real right or wrong way of doing this. Just kind of plop them in. And then once you have those, again, real, real light, just back and forth. Just blends them together a little bit. And if you want, you can actually pull in one direction, and it'll make your paint push that way. Like, let's say we'll take this one right here, and we'll just pull it to the left. it makes it streak out that way. And you can do that in this style because this canvas is wet. You prep it by putting liquid white on it and allows you to do all the blending right here up on the canvas. So you don't have to sit there and mix up 20 different shades of the same color just to put them on here. You can just do everything right there. All right, so there, there's our basic little sky. So now we're gonna put like some little rolling hills back in here. So to do that, I'm just going to use the fan brush. Let's go back into that same purple. I'm going to put some white in it. So I want this part to be a little bit lighter. When you're doing landscapes, the stuff that's further away will be lighter in value. And the closer it gets, the darker it'll get. So. You want to try to make it like that same color of the clouds that are up here already. And then just come through and make just like a basic little mountain shape. Just bounce your brush up and down and have it go wherever you really want. There's no right or wrong way of doing this part either. And come out over to here and pull it down. So then what you want to do is just go in here pull some of this paint down. There's not a lot of paint on the canvas though. Not a lot of paint. You're basically just putting in a little bit of value. And that's really about it. And all you're worried about when you're doing these is the top edge. You don't care what's happening down here down here doesn't matter none of that matters because now we're going to go in with our big brush let's do that to beat the little bit of paint off of it and then you're just gonna pull this paint down Follow your angles. But all this is doing right here is it's removing the excess paint from the bottom side of these mountains. That's really all you're doing with this step. Once you have it like that, just beat the extra little bits and pieces that you just picked up. 
real gently go across and it'll blend the whole thing along the bottom. Go upward with it. That'll kind of give a little bit of a misty effect at the bottom. Alright, so there's one little layer of clouds. <laughs> hey, what's up, Tokes? What's up, Osan? <laughs> Alright, so now we're going to do another layer closer. So to do that, we have to get a little bit darker. So this time we'll just go right into that regular purple that we were using. Before we had put some white into it, so now this is just like regular straight purple. And then you're just going to decide where you want another little set to be. So we'll have, we have one over here. So you have this kind of go up and then down and then up again. There, something like that. And then just put a little bit of color underneath it. Basically, I'm just cleaning off the brush at that point right there. So then you go in with your big brush again. And blend it out. Another little set of mountains, some little foothills. Alright, now we'll do one more. So with this one I'm going to add some blue into it. I want this one to be pretty dark. Alright, so let's go right over here. So just let your brush kind of bounce along and just pull it down. Take the big brush, blend this stuff out. There we go, just like that. We already have our mountains and clouds and sky and everything. So hopefully you guys can see everything on the stream. All right, good. Good, good, good. You know what? There's a little part of this that I want to make it look a little different. So 
So if you ever don't like a part of it, you can go in and change it. I want to have this a little bit better. I don't like it being so much of a triangle. That's better. It was looking too, too much like a pyramid. Bootyful. All right. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna start putting in like some little grassy areas and stuff back there. So to do that I'm just going to use the purple color that we were doing. And you're just going to kind of tap along the back edge. You're just putting in dark color right now. That's pretty much all you're doing. All you're doing is just tapping the bristles onto the canvas. It's not like a lot of pressure or anything. Go from over here. This is just putting down a dark base layer. You need to have this dark to show light. Alright, so now we have that dark put in. We wash the brush. Beat it dry. Alright, so you gotta make sure that your brush is nice and dry. If it isn't dry when you try to put the, the grassy colors on, it's gonna cut through all the paint and just turn it into like a big glob of brown. I do know how to treat the brushes. <laughs> Alright, so I'm go into some yellow. I also have some yellow ochre out here too. So I'm just going to tap back and forth between the yellows. Alright, I'm just going to come up to the to the purple and go slightly above it. Just to make the paint stick a little better. So now this is where you're going to start forming the lay of the land.
But don't just cover up the whole thing to make it like one big black of yellow. Put like a couple of like little like little valleys and stuff. And the way you do that is just by adding different colors or changing the orientation of your brush. Like you see how this is like going downward now? So what it does is it pushes this row back. It makes it look like this row is behind this row. Nice little rolling hills back here. And like if you wanted to act like there was like more light hitting certain spots, you can actually tap into just like a little bit of white. Just get a tiny bit of white on the bristles. And then you can just very gently touch a couple little spots. You know, just make it like a little bit brighter than the rest. But I'm just going to tap them so they go away. Alright, there we go. So now, we have to do this area. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some like bushes and stuff right here and then a couple big trees coming up like that. So to do that, I'm just going to use this dark color that we've been using. So take some more red. Some more blue. And mix up a nice little pile. So for this part, you can use whatever brush you want, really. I mean, I guess it'd just be whatever you're most comfortable with. Um. For bushes and trees and stuff, this is a really good brush right here. This is a one inch round brush. This is really good. I mean, you basically don't even need to do anything. You just tap the bristles into it. Get a decent amount of paint. And then we'll just put some little bushy shapes in here. And when you're putting these things in, you know, turn your brush and stuff. Don't just go across it with the brush upright the whole time. Actually, like, turn it and stuff and it'll make better shapes for you. I 
Alright, so then we'll put some big bigger bushes and trees over here. Here and there, if you want, you know, big trees, put them in. If you don't, don't put them in. This way it'll just kind of frame it in a little bit, you know what I'm saying? Alright, so then you're going to want to put highlights on all this stuff. Um, let me grab my script liner brush. I'm going to go into some paint thinner. I'm going to go into that color that I just used. For the bushes and trees and stuff. You just want to thin this down. And when you're loading this brush, you want to turn the bristles through it. Script liner brush has really, really long bristles. They hold a lot of paint in there. I'm just starting at the bottom. Let's put the indication of a little chunk going up. Same thing over here. And when you're doing that, turn the brush while you're pulling up. It'll just, it gives it a little bit better shape when it's all said and done. And you know, just here and there, you can put some little sticks and twigs coming out if you want. A little indications here and there however you want to do it you don't even need to do that part if you don't want because most of this stuff is going to get covered up when we put highlights on it anyway so you won't be seeing the majority of these but you know just so you know that they're there and then just put some little sticks and twigs down here makes it look kind of like a briar patch or something a good place to go rabbit hunting. Alright, so now we have those little things in. Wash the brush. Alright, now we gotta go in and put our highlights on. So I think I'm gonna use the round, the one inch round. This is a nice little brush. And you see how it already has a rounded over top? What that does is when you touch it, it automatically makes it a rounded over shape. So, real, real easy. So I'm gonna go into some liquid white. Right. I'm just gonna touch, touch, touch. Now for this part, you want to try to pick out like individual branch shapes, you know? You don't want to just go in here and start wailing against the canvas at random. You want to actually like try to pick out where you think little branches would be. And then if you want, you can change up the color, you know? We'll go into some yellow ochre. give this little area a different color. You can even go into some bright red for little areas if you want. It just makes it look like there's a bunch of different kinds of trees and bushes instead of just one big bush.
But one thing you want to make sure is that you leave some dark areas in there. If you <coughs> cover up all that dark, everything just gets really flat, and you won't be able to see any kind of depth at all. So every once in a while, clean off the brush. And me, clean off my knife. I need to get <coughs> a new piece of paper towel. I'm just going to scoop all this stuff up into a pile again. There we go. Alright, grab some more liquid white. Alright, now we'll do this one. Just vary the colors here and there. Alright, so now we're going to do this little middle section and grab some more yellow because I'm running low. go through and pick out little bushes. But again, make sure you leave some little dark spots in there. You don't want to cover up everything. Like if you can see, I'm leaving little dark spots all in here. And it just makes it so you can have more depth in it. Depth is your best friend. You want to be able to like look back into it. There's a nice little red bush. A nice little red one. And every once in a while, clean off your brush. You'll start picking up that uh, dark purple color. So whenever that happens, just clean up the brush. Quick and easy. Let's go over here. All you're doing is just tapping. Tap, tap, tap. 
tap, tap, tap. Grab some liquid white. Using liquid white just makes it so the paint will stick easier. That's all you're doing with that. have our little highlights on all of our bushes and stuff. So I was saying this is going to be a little bit of water down here. So what you have to do for that is you want to put some of that same dark color down here in the water itself. And then just real quick, just put some of that same color reflected down here as well. It doesn't have to be exact, but you know, try to keep it somewhat similar. All right, so now we have those. Use your big brush, you gotta clean it off first. this is clean and dry for this part too and all you're going to do is you're just going to go along where you think like the edge of the coast would be you just touch and pull straight down you don't need to put a lot of pressure on here just touch and pull it down Try to go straight down with these. All right, so then you go across it real, real gentle. And this just kind of gives it like a little shimmer. You probably can't see this part on stream, but it gives it like a the appearance of it being like glassed over. Alright, so then we need a little bit of land over here just so it doesn't look like it's floating on nothingness. So to do that, I think I'm just gonna use like a little bit of brown. So I'll go over here, grab some Van Dyke. It's a little bit of Van Dyke. And then you can use whatever brush you want. You could use the knife for this part or whatever. I think I'm just going to use my little broken fan brush. Let me just get some paint on here. And then you're just going to scrub in a little bit of land. same brush. Let's grab a little bit of white and real gently just kind of barely graze it. It 
just gives a little indication of some land. Alright, and now you can take your knife, grab a little bit of the liquid white, pull it out really flat on your palette, really flat, and then cut across and you'll get a little roll of paint on the top edge. You're going to use that to cut in a little water line. Just a little indication of some water. And just like that, go into some paint thinner. Get some bright red. I'm setting this down here in the corner. Here we go, DL. 